All right. Mary, Dana, Gabrielle, Pratee, Shilton. Well, listen, I'm very, very excited for today's speaker. Okay, the reason why is I know Andrew for about over 15 years. And um, over the years, if some of you don't know who Andrew is, Andrew is a very, very – probably has one of the top 10, he'll tell you better than me, top 10 most biggest podcasts uh, download in finance, more than Kramer does, believe it or not. He's a great presenter, he's been a great contributor towards the education community, and I love having him on. I always learn something new. This guy, uh, you, when you listen to Andrew, you'll see, due to his experience and his background of, of managing money, uh, building uh, – plugins for 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 trade station and so on he's never ever stopped to kind of enhance his edu not only his education but training the world on how to learn faster and make more money doing it so uh, he's going to go over a lot of great things he'll tell you a lot about his bio I just once again he's probably our longest tender channel partner here at cyber trade university and you know and he's been such a uh, a loyal committed and a great presenter, and once again, like I said earlier, a great contributor to the education market. So um, he's going to talk for about an hour. He's going to tell you a little bit about what, what's going on, and he's going to tell you a little bit about, uh, about the markets and what you need to do. And, and, you know, once again, any other questions, feel free to sit in the chat and uh, ask them. So, Andrew, the stage is all yours. Everybody enjoy the presentation. Hey, thanks, Fausto. Uh, thank you so much, and it's been great working with you, Fausto, another great uh, educator, and I uh, appreciate all your efforts and things that you've taught me over the years as well. So um, so if everybody can hear me well, uh, I'm going to share my screen with you, and I want to talk about a few things. One of the things I want to talk about is the concept and, and take off what, on from what Jesse had talked about, uh, some of the areas of support resistance, but, but I want to talk about the whole idea of momentum and velocity as well, and I'm going to explain the important difference there and what that is all about. Um, and just to let you know, I'll give you some links in a little while of you know how you can find me. The Discipline Investor is the blog, discipleninvestor.com. Uh, trigger Charts is also the area that we have dedicated for our indicators that we have built and that we use ourselves internally here. So um, I'll give you that as well. But triggercharts.com you can check out as well. Let me uh, get the screen up here. Just give me one second to get this loaded here. And uh, we hopefully will get this. You'll be able to see what's going on. Wait for this to come up. And uh, what we're going to bring up is the S&P 500 index. That should be on the screen now. And I'm going to shrink this down. So hopefully you can. Can you see that? Is that uh, good for everybody? Let me know if you can see my screen right now. You should see my mouse moving around. Okay, is the screen in the right size too? It's shrunk. Okay, great. Okay, good, good, good. All right, so what we're looking at is, is exactly what Jesse looked at a second ago, right? We're looking at the S&P 500 down 1.7% today, 35 points, a pretty rough day on the markets, dropped down. I drew in, as I was watching Jesse talk just a moment ago, I drew in very similar lines to he, what he had, some support and resistance lines and some levels that he was talking about. And you can see them just by using a, you know, a quick tool of just going here and just clicking, boom, and moving that exactly where I want that, et cetera, all right? So that's interesting, and that's good. And you can do things like, for example, very simply on whatever software you're using, you can say, oh, we got some interesting levels of, uh, of, of an up-channel trends, and we can kind of draw a few things here and say, okay, we were an uptrend to that point until it broke. Uh, you know, that's very good, and that's a very subjective way of doing things. Some of the things that you see here is that when we look at this support level, we saw that a couple of different bounces on a daily and it bounced off of that. And then we got to this level here, couldn't break. Okay, that's all great. But what I want to show you is the next level, what I like to look at, because what I want to look at is where we're seeing accumulation and distribution from an institutional basis, right? Because if you think about it for a second, really, who do we want to follow? Do we want to look at where we think lines are, where things are going, and what we believe from all of our training and education is going to tell us, okay, yeah. Do we want to look at some things like, for example, uh, very simple moving averages? So just take a look at moving averages. We got the 50 and the 200-day moving average just in the background there. We can see that we broke down below the 50-day moving average today. We still have the 200-day moving average down about two, at around 2,000 on the S&P 500. You know, what we're we looking at that. We're looking at the 100-day, the 150-day. We're looking at an exponential moving average. What is it? Well, those things are all important. 
very important to look at. But really, again, I want to look at what the institutions are doing. I want to follow along with what the big guys are doing because if they're the ones moving big sums of money in and out of the market, i got to tell you something. They're probably going to be the ones that are going to be making the moves happen. We all agree with that, right? The big question is how do you find that? How do you understand that? And really, the nice thing about markets, the, the real beautiful thing about markets is a very simple concept, is that we have price and we have volume. So what we have is an auction market where there is the opportunity for players to be buying, some to be selling, and we come up with a price agreement at to what level is that level that we're going to be happy buying or selling. Now, a lot of times after the fact, we can draw in these nice trend lines and we can see what happens and look for support and resistance, but more so beyond support and resistance, where is the velocity? Because when you're trading and you're daily doing your thing and you're looking for breakdowns and breakups and movement, you don't want slow, sloggy movements, right? Does everybody agree with me there? You don't want like little bitty movements. You want velocity moves. You want momentum moves. You want significant moves through pricing, right? Yeah, I know. You don't want to be sitting there all day waiting for, oh, I got finally got five cents on this thing. I mean, you want, you know, if you're day trading, you want a 50 cent move, a dollar move. You want something moving quickly. So the question is, how do you find that? Because we can be bouncing along the support level that we're looking at here forever. So let's take off some of these and, and, and go to the next level. Let's say, okay, well, this is going to get a little complicated, but just follow me here for a second. Nice colors. What we have here is what's called market profiles. Now, we built these. These are basically the idea of looking at where is the volume at price. Now, traditionally, when you look at a chart, you're looking at the, a, a level. I don't even have it on this chart, actually, because I don't even use it anymore. But you look at the bottom, you'll see all your different volume and where your volume was and your volume movement just on a vertical, vertical line, right? You're going to see. Actually, you know what we'll do? Let me, let me throw this on here. Let me just quickly throw on volume. There we go. All right, there's our volume. That's what we're traditionally going to look at, right? Along the bottom, we're looking at the volume. We can see today was volume was higher than it was. We can look at volume averages and see what happens. There was a little volume here and all. But that, what does that tell us? It tells us the total volume for that particular day. And we're now we're looking at this entire range. So where was the volume? Was a lot of people buying at this level, at this level? What, 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 you know, we don't know much about this right now. So with this market profile that I put on here for you, which is these ranges, these, you see these colors? What this does is this shows me the volume at price and how much volume compared to uh, levels of volume at any price is playing. So for example, let's look at this particular market profile. This market profile, there's some yellows in here. These are the, the highest amount of volume that has been actually traded along this entire range from, we'll call it, uh, the 9th of December through the 21st of January. This price right here, 2010, is a level where all the action happened. Okay, now we could also see that there's something missing in some of these. You see this market profile right here? See there's some blank areas, not a lot of action here. The lines don't go well across. See how some of these, like in this market profile, there's a big blob of red in here, a lot of thickness, a lot of activity that happened here, a lot of volume that went in, these, in this particular price range. When you come down here below the levels, here, there's not much. There's not much going on right here. See that open area? Kind of an open area here. Big open area right here. Not much volume here. Do you understand what I'm saying here? Do you see that there are some empty areas in the range? Sometimes you can think of these as kind of gaps where traders are not really participating much. And when that happens, we know that traders do not have these prices keyed in. These are not prices that they're willing to actually utilize for spending. They're not going to spend their money at that price. So what happens here is you'll notice that why did we see such a sharp breakdown here? Well, if you go backwards in time and we look at 
this area, you can see there was very little volume over the last several market profiles, over the last several months. So when you broke down here, you got big velocity down. And now you have an open area that anything can happen. Now, interestingly, this breakdown today occurred where there was some historic volume, but not much. Because if you go back even further, you can see that there was this big area, almost to the dime. You can see there was a big hole. There was nothing going on back here. Big open area. And this will be made even clearer when you look at short-term situations. This is just a basic concept of market profile. Okay, When you're looking at this, you want to find when these things start giving you holes, when there are areas that there are openings. Let's see if we can go back a little further. So this is a good example, right in this area here. You'll notice that we weren't sure what would happen if this broke down, but darn, we can say that, you know what, if this cleared that area, there was nothing underneath. You see how this market profile, there's very little volume, there's very little volume at price, no commitment. And that's why you saw this massive move lower. And then the opposite happened as well. When you saw that it was starting to move back up, we saw it really zip very quickly through time, very quickly, vertical, not on a horizontal level like we see this consolidation here. You saw this zipping through because there was very little volume that was going to be uh, any kind of resistance level. So we could draw these lines, but I would rather look at where there are these gaps in trader commitment. And you can see that all over the place. Now it takes a little time to get used to this. There's a lot of different patterns that we could look at over time. Uh, there's things that are called normal distributions. A normal distribution, this is a normal, semi-normal distribution right here. This is kind of a Y distribution. This is a P. See this P? So you can draw a P here. See that P? That P shows me that underneath that P, there's nothing there. And therefore, there's a big opportunity for a short. And then we'll talk about levels where you can get to in a moment. Here again, we had a P. Let's see if we can find a B. Here's a, here's a no, this is not, this is, this is a wide P. But again, under these levels, or for that matter, if we have a B structure, a normal distribution is something like this, a big D, capital D. This is kind of a D right here. This is a normal distribution. A lot of movement there, but that's of this distribution. We can see going backwards again that why do we see this big move up right here? There was nothing here. There was nothing really to speak of in this particular area. Therefore, a short squeeze can really push things up pretty significantly. So while these lines are really good to look at some basic levels of just price only, the fact is that you want to really find uh, where the prices are, but also what the volume behind it is. Uh, Craig has a question of how do you set the periods every 1.5 months. I'm not exactly sure what the purpose of that is. Uh, we're not trying to do anything more but find out where the distributions are. We have what we call swings in here where the distributions break. There are some settings in here that you can change. Uh, for example, these are all available on TradeStation, by the way. Uh, if we look at, um, for example, where's my radar? Here's my radar. Uh, we have 30 bars back. We can go back 45, I guess. Look at that. Not much different. A little bit different. But there you go. That's one and a half months, for example. No, no, we're using the current period, but we're using the current period. We're, look, looking, we're looking at a range of 45 days, and we're looking at where the action was. And of course, yes, we are going to be looking backwards. This is the range of volume in this price, in this time frame, but utilizing 45 days worth of data inside of here. So it's obviously you, can, you, know, you want to make sure. This is, by the way, market profile. If you ever look this up, look up market profile. Market profile is what institutional investors use for trading. They want to find out where everybody else, they're kind of sniffing around to find out where everybody else is playing, where everybody else is actually uh, looking to uh, find where their actual trades are going to be, okay? I use 30 days on this, on the daily. 
it changes that quickly. You can see what's going on. You can change this, you know, to, to any time period you want. For example, you want to look at this on uh, 60 minute, for example. Take a second to bring up. You can look at what happens here. And you can see, again, once we broke through this level, I'll draw it here. You see, once we broke through this level, there has been no significant amount of volume below that. And that's why we had that velocity trade down. And then you saw that, again, in this whole range here, there's really been nothing to right here. But that's where we got stuck. Look at that. Right here, go across. That was the exact bottom where that yellow was. You can do this on a minute chart. You can do this on any chart you want. But let me just tell you something. You could trade quickly, okay, with a 60-minute chart, and you can intraday trade. You don't have to wait for anything. This just gives you a knowledge of what happens. So when you start breaking down below this level, you know that, hey, there's a lot of uh, room to go. Again, whether it's up or down, you know, you got this move up here because there was nothing happening. Look at that move right off of the, of the base. You got that move up right here. Um, the, the yellow lines are the most active or the highest volume node in any uh, of, of that particular, what we call that radar, that market profile. That is where the big volume was traded, right at that level. Sometimes there's two because you'll see that there is a reasonable amount of volume, so it's showing you that, and it's showing you there's a lot of density there, and we, sometimes we break them up a little bit. Um, depending on the actual, yes, the point of control. Did I say point of control or you're, or you're asking me? Point of control is the high volume node. That is pretty much oftentimes the point of control. Now, let's just go one step further. We made this even easier. Let me take off some of this here. Let me take all this stuff off here. And then we'll go to different stocks in a second. Now, this is an algorithm that we developed that has, let me make this bigger for you so you can see this. This now has one step further. This shows you the ranges where the consolidation is and where the breakdowns are. When you are below a, we call these altimeters, when you're below these and you can utilize the a green as a soft area for potential breakdowns, when you're below this area, it's a do not long. When you're above, you're do not short. Once you do have a confirmed breakdown, then you go short and look at that nice little move. You know, we're showing that there is a velocity move. They move very quickly once they confirm and go through that. So what you have here is now the next level, very easy to see when you actually start looking at where you can go long or where you can go short. And it gives you the times and points of and levels where you can actually look for, for example, your targets. So I'll give you an example of something. If we're looking at, again, this is just the, the S&P we're looking at right here. Uh, let's take a look at let's take a look at this particular altimeter. Okay, so we're covering a couple of days here, but what I want to show you here is we have a range, right? So this is the base range, the top and the bottom of the box, right? That we're drawing here. This is a consolidation zone. When you're inside the consolidation zone, you have a couple different choices. You could actually start going long on the bottom, going short on the top, until you break through. And you go long. So what you would do is, once you get to this point here, the top, if you don't break through the level, you can go short, get to the bottom, you go long until you break through, and you can go short there. And again, oftentimes I want to do confirm on close. Then you go long. So you can play it back and forth. The same thing, play it back and forth if you can. Okay. Now if you see that you're sitting on the bottoms, you see that on these kind of situations you have a lot of your action is sitting on the bottom, right, right here. But it can't break down. This doesn't break down. Just want, You can say, well, there's a lot of support at that level. So maybe I want to consider playing just the long side bouncing. And then what happens is if you do, in fact, break down and you start getting a new altimeter form that's lower, see how this one is It's lower? You start looking at the trend. Now look at the general trend of these altimeters here. They're, they're going down, right? That means that my price action, obviously, without even looking at pricing, I can see my price action is going down, and I know that this is setting up for the potential drop. So I may play this, go short, go long, go short, out, possibly long. It comes back in. I go short. I'm going to watch it. I may play this to the short side. I may continue to play this to the short side. Keep on shorting on the tops, shorting on the tops. And once you see that confirmed break, you can load up for bear. Boom. See that? 
Now, even easier than this, we show you with colors. I like to use all of these together. This is just confirming a breakout. This is not trading inside of a consolidation necessarily. So what this is saying is that yellow, hey, there's an alert. Hello, big siren, alert, go long. If it confirms, you're going to go long. You're going to stay long. You're going to stay long. And then this is where you went out. So you would have been long from about here to about here. Then you're out. You're consolidating. Nothing happening. You go long again. Not much of a gain here because there's a consolidation. But you can see that, hey, wait a minute. Something's happening. Not much happening. Consolidation, gray, you're not in. You're going to try to go a little long. It didn't work out. But then you go short. You're going to stay short. Short didn't really work out well here. But here's where your short worked out nicely. Move out. Yeah, orange is a move out. Then you went short again. You went from about 12.65 down to about 12.44. Again, that's just a simple review of that. Now, the point, the reason why I'm bringing this up um, is that there are several ways to look at markets, but the bottom line is we we'll want to find that momentum. Now, whether you do it on a you know five-minute chart, we don't like to really use less than 30 minutes, and I'll tell you why. If you really think about what's going on here, we want to see a volume accumulation. We want to see where traders are actually placing their bets. And then we want to find out where those activities are most probable for the move. And if, in fact, we look at this in, let's say, on a one-minute basis, how much volume is really playing there? And how fast can you really trade in and out on a one-minute basis? You want to get an accumulation of information together and then make a directional move that moves very quickly and then you can trade it quickly. Does that make sense? So let's take a look at, for example, let's look at oil for a second here. Okay. So here's crude oil, there's the futures in crude oil. And a couple things that you can notice here that there are some very wide areas. See these gigantic areas are very long. You see these big breaks on the move, okay? You see what happened? There we go. Um, you can see these big moves that are occurring here, and there's very wide areas, very wide. Then you see a consolidation here, very short area. This is a very special area right here. When you see these very wide areas in our timbers, and then a consolidation, the next break in that direction is the one you really want to take. You take the short. Now you see another wide area here. Now you see a consolidation. Next break, you want to take that long. Big area here, gigantic area, and then it starts to compress and compress, and then you take the short. So it's all about where these wide areas um, are, are, are going, and then where you get this compression of the actual movement. So you get price indecision on the wide areas, and you get price uh, confirmation, or if you will, agreement on the consolidations. The question is, where do you find market profile? Clifford, can you give me a better question than that? Uh, because market profile is available. Very simple ones that don't have a lot of things that we do uh, in there, but the very simple uh, range market profiles can be found in most software packages. Uh, you could find if you, I don't know if you use, anybody uses TradeStation, but I will give you some information here in a second. So here, when you get a chance, you can take a look at that. Um, the market profile or the radar itself or what we call the commander series is available on the strategy network or the trading app store over at TradeStation. All of the things that I'm showing you here are available on TradeStation. This actually, the way it looks right now with these particular, the look of what you're seeing um, is not available to the end of the month. We're still testing some of this in terms of the way we laid it out. There's a different look, but it's the same concept. All right, so, so let's take a look for a moment um, about the whole idea of, of looking at uh, risk and reward, right? So when you're trading, and Fausto talks about this all the time, um, so w when, he, when you're talking about trading, you want to look at, well, what's your risk reward, right? Where's my risk reward parameters? And you know, what am I going to really look for? One of the big things you need to do is you need to understand where is the, you know, the trade trend, right? So right now we see that these altimeters and what's happening here on these profiles that we built uh, are trending down. There's no question about that, right? Now they're starting to kind of stabilize a little bit down here, all right? But I'm going to throw something else on here for you. Uh, 
So, the, so the, the first thing we talk about is the whole idea of directional move and um, velocity, right? We want those velocity trades. We want to be able to be on the right side of the trade. We want to know when the breakout happens. We want to know when the breakdown happens. We want to know what the potential is going to be, where our risk is limited or is going to be uh, able to get to. So we already talked about, you know, looking at, you know, if you're short and you go above the area that we have designated here, you don't want to be, you don't want to be long at that point. If you're long, you don't want to be, uh, uh, you know, being long if it breaks down. But what about what is the bigger trend and how is that trend changing? Now, this is oil, so oil may look a little ugly these days. But you can see we have something on the bottom called the aileron. Now, the aileron is a different kind of a indicator because what we're looking at at the top here is the idea of velocity moves, resistance, and support levels that are keyed into volume-based studies, volume and price. On the bottom here, what we're looking at is price-based using uh, 15 different specialized indicators that come together to form where is the trend. Now, the trend we can see that when we go above zero, below zero, where we get turns, where we get these clusters, see these, um, these plus marks here, or these plus marks here, we get these cluster formations, we get different colorations. When you see that we are below this line and you see that we're breaking down below these altimeters, this is a short, and you don't release this short at any cost, okay? What is, what is TOS? We don't write, I don't think we write for TOS. Oh, yeah, we don't write, for, this is not, our stuff is not available, uh, the algorithms we have on, on, on that, but yeah, I think that's when I got you. Um, but, you know, we, we, we have the opportunity to write for all the different uh, platforms, but we chose TradeStation because of its accuracy and speed of doing this and all that. But anyway, yeah, the, 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 the um, market profile may look a little different on the different platforms. So just keep that in mind. All right, so when you're looking at this, uh, this aileron, you see, hey, we've we got a nice trend down. It's not really breaking up. It's not above zero. The trend hasn't changed. All of a sudden, we see it move up here. This would have been a great time to consider getting long. Look at what happens here. So what we see here, I'll mark it up again. So a change in, in momentum. See this? See this kind of going down, going down. Really, you see, not really seeing this. We saw this a little bit here. See this change in momentum, and we have support. Nice support. Can't break down below this level here. Call it 48 half, something like that. So now all of a sudden we get this level of change of momentum all of a sudden that corresponds to a nice hold and then a break. You could have gotten along probably about 48.50, something like that. Not a big deal, but the beautiful thing right now is we still haven't seen a significant breakdown. We're still consolidating. Now oil is starting to break down here. We're starting to see it turn right here. But there was some opportunity to be on the long side of this trade recently. That's starting to change again with oil. You probably all are well aware of what's going on there, obviously. Um, I'll bring up a stock here, for example. Again, these are just daily looks at things. GoPro is something we've been talking about shorting for a long time. Uh, but let's take a look at what's going on here. We see that there's a bit, a bit of a rocky movement here. But clearly, if you look at the trend, Everything's getting lower, right? We know that from our altimeters, but we also know about price. Obviously, we can see what's going on there. But you can see what's happening here is that the momentum has been changing. We saw this big move on the upside here that was right about here. But then it just broke down, and you can see that the momentum is clearly all along the bottom. So this momentum is a beautiful thing to give us uh, an opportunity to find out much more about what's going on. Is this breakdown done? I don't know. I'm not seeing anything that's turning around here. I don't see anything at all that's showing me that this breakdown is at all over. Now, it may, in fact, show up somehow that we're not seeing it. We can bring up things like our market profile, which probably is not going to give us um, a lot here, only because there's really not much going on below this. We're below all levels that can be really seen, but there's really nothing here. We're at the bottom of the barrel. So there's not a lot that we can see there. But the, but the good news is from that, the bottom line is that you see that it did break, and you know the trend is still the same. Okay, so somebody asked about seeing Gern, G E R R O N, G E R N, Geron. Now this is a a low price stock. Again, this is daily. 
Uh, but take a look at what's going on here, okay? You can see that you have very clear levels that you could have been in the stock, you know, going back to whatever date you want or out of the stock for that matter. You got a nice, look, look at this one right here. This would have been a great, great buy right here because you got a trend change, you got it going above zero, you got support, you got a breakout, and then you did a little bit of consolidation here, but look at this. Everything was showing you that the trend was moving higher. We picked it up at about two, and it moved nicely up. Then you saw a little bit of a breakdown, right? Look at this here. You saw that we're starting to see a train, change of trend here, but you held support, held support, held support. All these are holding support. Now that changed dramatically right about here. But then again, you start to move back up. You turn the corner, held support, and it blew up beautifully. Now again, you can do this on any time frame. It's all the same. You know, if you look at it, let's say, on a... 60 minute time frame. Okay. Um, and actually, let's throw on something else here if I can. Uh, give me one second here because it's going to load. You would have been, um, if you would have, let's get this really cleaned up for you here. Okay. So, you'd have been some in and out. The reds are uh, shorts, the greens are longs. This is on a 60 minute chart. Okay. You would have been short and you would have gotten out of it, but you would have been long right here at 316, rode it all the way up to about uh, 361, gotten long again at about, what level is that there? 360, and been riding it all the way up pretty much to 410. Again, you could, you could, any, any time frame you want. Kind of, I like to look at multiple time frames, by the way. It's very important to look at multiple time frames because what you want to do here is get confirmation. Okay. Again, on this 30 minute, you saw this really change of dynamic right here on the aileron. You got a nice break up. You got a confirmation on the autopilot to give you a, a, a green buy. So you kind of went from your 280 you would have been in at. You would have sold it right here at about 332. This is on a 30 minute chart. And back in about 338. Sold it uh, 352. Back in and out a little bit of confusion, what's going on. And then bet, uh, bit in it. Then you would have taken a little bit of a profit. And then back in it at 375 all the way up to the 410, and now you're, you're consolidating. Now, the bottom line is you're out. So the autopilot gives you these in and out signals automatically. So it takes into consideration market profile, takes into consideration trend, momentum, all the things that you're looking at right here, the autopilot will give you, tell you exactly what to do. And what's nice about this is actually, um, I don't know if the other, uh, other ones have this, but there is a um, multiple time frame. You can just put all of these stocks in here and it will tell you exactly what to do on all these. See how it shows you like, for example, GLD. So, well, that's not a good example. Let's give you a good example. Um, SHLD uh, on a 30 minute chart, you're 15 short. On a 60 minute chart, you're 12 bars short, two bars short on a, uh, a 240 minute and then you're out on the dailies and weeklies. See that you went out of this. You're long over here. Moved up, you sold it right here. So you got long about 36, sold it 37. You can give me uh, you can give me stocks. It's fine. I'll take a look at it. Uh, let's just switch this back to a long term. Again, go back and forth. I think it's important. Uh, this is TradeStation. Yes, TradeStation has uh, this radar screen, which is unbelievable. It's pretty much you can put 500 different charts into one little window. It tells you uh, what the what the algorithm is saying. It works great on Forex. It's all price space, so it's all good. Um, FireEye, this is, uh, what is this now? This is daily on FireEye. So FireEye, um, a security okay. uh, technology company, is, um, you know, it really didn't do well in all of its earnings, and there's a lot of disappointment with this company, but a lot of the recent hacking has really spurred on demand for many of these kinds of companies, um, Palo Alto Network, Symantec. So when you look at actually this particular uh, chart that you're looking at here, okay, a lot of consolidation inside of here. This is on a daily chart. A lot of consolidation the last several, you know, since December we'll call it. Um, it really hasn't been, as far as I can see, a very significant move besides what we just saw recently. So FireEye obviously was, there was a call for a long here back at uh, 38. You were in a little bit here. Um, you saw that there was a change in oh, right. dynamic. You saw that we're starting to get better and stronger oh, as we're yeah. over this number, this, this zero line of the um, aileron, and uh, a change of the dynamic because you saw it well below for some time and really not much going on here. Okay. So FireEye would have been a long 38, right up to about 45, uh, excuse me, uh, right up to about 44. You're out, in and out, and now it's a short. 
If you look at this on a shorter term basis too, here's FireEye. It's on a 60 minute, oh, about to be on a 60 minute chart. He's on a 60 minute chart. I'm only seeing shorts here. Obviously you're seeing that the, you know, on a 60 minute chart, you're well below, not a lot of strength, short a couple of times, a lot of consolidation. And until this breaks down, uh, and there's a significant move here. I'm this is not I'm not inclined to really play this. You need to get below. Well, right now you're right on support here. You get below this level, you're going to see a crack. Yeah, you can definitely see a crack here. Let's see. All right, thanks. Yeah. Um, let's take off the radar. I was going frantic trying to find uh, it in my webinar. You. Yeah, you get below this 40, this 40 number. It's a little bit ugly. Come up and you can see it move back down to 36 in theory. In, in your okay. Email? Yeah. Um, somebody asked me about Forex. Uh, we can look at, uh, for example, um, well, we can look at. No, this is the future. This is the, this is the. Um, the future is a Japanese yen. I guess we can look at. USD. Yeah. Thanks. Okay. Here, here's the uh, U.S. dollar uh, JPY. Um, you see that pretty much went long. When is this back? Three five. This is on this is on a daily chart. Is this daily? No, a sixty minute chart. So on 3.5, it went long, and it's been long ever since. It got out recently, and it's been consolidating inside of there. You got to look backwards a little bit. And you can see that right now there's a change in dynamic here. Hang on a second. This, is, this keeps on. The uh, projector needs some time for some reason to bring up. Slides for the, uh, fate, for the lessons okay, there we go. one through eight are in um, the PDFs. But is there okay, so you see there's a change dynamic down. here that all of a sudden uh, there was this nice yeah, move. So this nice break, all these great things. Uh, we're consolidating now on the end here, this kind of movement here. And uh, while we're seeing this change in direction here, you'll notice that there was a, um, a big move lower, obviously. And, uh, you know, on the dollar back uh, on, it was, uh, that was on 7 o'clock today, on the 10th. Hey, that was today. And uh, now that we're starting to consolidate here, until we get a, a decent break above this level, I would not touch this on a 60-minute chart. I mean, you could, again, you could move this around anyway, 10 minute chart, whatever you want to do. Here's a 10 minute chart. You see this is all live, by the way. All this is, is in live time. It's all moving around. Um, this was long here. It's kind of uh, eh, off about a few ticks on this. You can see it's the same thing that was long for a long time and kind of came out here. Tried to go long again here, but it's failing. You're going to see a breakout here. If it does break out above this level that we have signified by these colors and it's kind of sitting right in there. And by the way, I want to show you something. These altimeters levels are drawn right here, the first day right here. It's drawn right here. And there's no magic how these are staying um, below because what we do is we look at the levels that have been projected by the um, radar and the market profile and we look at where that support resistance level is based on you know either volume or time or, or uh, um, a price. And what happens here is that you know it's not – you can see how the projection works very nicely. Look at that. that that's your resistance right there. And look at how they, they held so nicely along all these lines until they don't. When they don't, that's where the problem comes in, by the way. So that was, and, and then you got, uh, so you have cur your currencies, uh, you have um, uh, uh, futures, uh, stocks, ETFs, whatever it else is. So, um, Jacob, the gray box shows the previous period profile. It's a, this isn't, the gray box is an algorithm of, the combination of the profile uh, and also what we have is a swing and momentum movement and to find out where those levels are of the potential break or the potential uh, breakdown or break up. So the boxes and that you're talking about, these gray areas, uh, is a consolidation range in where there is uh, a lot of uh, in, uh, a price agreement. When you start breaking above that is where there's la a lack of agreement and where you want to start possibly moving into position. What other stocks we have here? And I want to go on to another Closing quick out. discussion. It's about the something. same room. So, right. so the thing about here is what 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 um, I want to explain to you, and what's important about this, and why these work so well is it gives you a very defined level of where your targets are because they're constantly redrawing. Okay, you know that you went long at this level right here. Right, we're looking at the the end here. Went long here. Okay, and we know as we're going along in time where those defined levels uh, of the profit is because we start drawing new levels, and once we break below that level, the orange comes up, which says, hey, take your profits, let's move on. Okay. Until we get there, obviously, where the profit is the entry point. We 
looked in here and we almost got close to a profit point, but we stayed above it. And look how nicely that worked. I mean, it's a beautiful trade. These trades are just working very nicely. Oh, okay, got it. Right, right. It's very important to monitor looking at um, these levels of support resistance and having it on a um, unemotional basis. One of the things that's really important for traders to do is to understand that once you start having emotions involved in all this, the whole thing is you know, just goes to hell. You have to have some kind of a, of a system or at least some kind of a non-emotional, absolute way of looking at things and understanding that, okay, I'm going to look at this in black and white. Now, a lot of things can happen. Um, the, the, the fact is that when you look at the intervention by central banks, when you look at what's gone on around the world, I don't know, 20 different either stimulus packages or uh, rate cuts, so far this year, that's unheard of. It's ridiculous. Meanwhile, you know, we're sitting on, uh, you know, potentially moving our, our, um, our, our currency higher due to the fact that we're going to increase our rates. Okay, well, our economy seems strong, right, from all things, particularly employment. Fact of the matter is, not as strong as you may think. When you look at the economic surprise indicator and you look at that, what you're finding is that there is a, a, a big divergence in expectations to actual reports. Manufacturing has slowed down a little bit. We're seeing the factory orders popped a little bit, but you know inventories have come down. We're seeing that um, when you look at retail sales, they're flat. Spending is kind of flat. When you're looking at all the different indicators around, not as great as you would see, even though we have a decent GDP. Uh, one of the things we have also, just a side note, uh, if you take a look at this, uh, looking at a lot of this stuff. So, for example, we have this available on TradeStation. This is for free. There is no charge for this on TradeStation. For example, we can look at you know gross domestic product, uh, look at a change, and it will just draw a nice little chart for you. You can see what the GDP is. You can see what the um, percent change from a year ago, for example. We'll just redraw that and see where we are. Uh, all these different things, prices, uh, oil's under, it's CPI, like for example. And you can change dates, year to date. Take a look at banking. You can see uh, what is the... Uh, Effective fund rate. Mm -hmm. So all this is available also. Um, Victor, white bars. Uh, yeah, the gray bars that you looked at for a second ago. These are uh, areas that are you're neutral. You're out of the position. You're not. You do not have a trade on. That's what those are. Okay. Okay. Um, the other thing that we have that I like to look at, and let me see if I can bring this up here, because sometimes you're not exactly sure where things lie. I like to understand a little bit more about markets and what's happening here in terms of, um, you've heard of oversold and overbought, right? A lot of times people are just throwing that out there. You know, what's oversold? What's overbought? Well, the psychological levels in terms of maybe like things like... Um, well, uh, how many shares are traded uh, short on the index or maybe uh, put call ratios or there's a lot of different things that you can look at. What we did was we combined a variety of these things into an indicator and we did this initially for us so we can understand a little bit more about what's happening with the markets and when those times were that markets were getting to a point of so overly done to the downside that it looks like, hey, man, we need to start thinking about loading up here even though things look like they're going to hell in a handbasket, okay? Um, but, or, or where things are getting too hot that we need to say that, hey, may, maybe things are going to roll over here. Um, this is much better because of the psychology of investing. And the psychology, psychology of investing is, um, uh, is, is you know, all about fear and greed. So when you look at the levels of fear and greed that are out there, we want to understand where things are getting to a point of, of really overheating or getting oversold. So when we look at this now, you can see that, wait, look at that. We're starting to see one of those green dots appear that we've seen like over here, over here. We're starting to see this a negative four, which is the market is getting pretty oversold here. Five is really the level you want to see. Like that's a buyable bottom right there. Now this does not have anything to do with price, by the way. This is psychology of the markets. When we put this into an indicator, because I want to understand with all the things that we're looking at, when is the time where all of a sudden things are going to turn? It doesn't matter, by the way. If we go back... And we look at this and we see, hey, things are getting really hot here. But, you know, markets can continue going up and hot for a long time because people are oftentimes very enthusiastic until things get a little bit directionally the wrong way. And what happens is that people usually will buy more than they'll sell. What I mean by that is people are usually willing to put money into the market versus take money out of the market, okay? 
But when I start seeing these green dots, these cluster formations and these overdone levels, okay, these are what I consider viable bottoms. Okay, you got one here, got them here. We're starting to get the first glimpse of them here. Now, not all of them will work, but the bottoms are a better play than the tops because you see, look at all these. Look at all those clusters forming. Look at all that heat. Look at all this. Markets can stay overheated for a long time. The only thing that you have to know about that is when markets stay overheated for a very long time, as you see here, when they do start to turn, they turn hard. And you see this took one, two, three, four days to get back to the top. When they're over, overheated, it takes a little while to come down. But then they come down, and when they start coming down, they come down fast. When they're oversold, they come back up very fast. So this is our key reversal indicator. We look for these reversal points on this. So what I, point I'm trying to bring up here is that you want to find out when market psychology is so negative that it's a viable bottom. If in fact you go and you look at things um, on your, let's bring this back over here, on your chart, back to the S&P 500. Well, let's go look at the cues for a second here. Okay, when sentiment gets so bad, look at we stop right on. Look at that, stop right on support today. Broke down and stopped right on support. Now, if we do break down further, I would say that we have to about 103.56. If you look at looking backwards, where that level of next support is right here from a couple back, there's some good support there. And even if I threw on my uh, market profile, you can see there is just nothing here down to. I'll draw. Let me draw a straight line here. It's two different levels. This one. Yeah, that one. Those are the two levels that there's really some significant amount of um, what I would call viable support on the cues. So you can see a break down to about 105.11, uh, down to about 104.18 right now, intermediate term breakdown. Okay, and yes, I would say that that is also something. I'll show you something else. So look at the look at the uh, small caps. It's kind of interesting on the small caps. The small caps have been holding up very well, extremely well. Let's draw some of those lines just to extend them a little bit. And that one there that we showed you, uh, you know, these, these, these areas. And then let's draw a nice box in here. There is, uh, there is good support in some areas here, but you got a bit of a hole down to about the same level there. Um, comes a little bit here. Let's bring it right down below. So you can see either thing happen right now. It's, it, is, it is still on support. It's still not really broken down here. And you do see this rollover on the bottom, so momentum has changed dramatically. It is much different than what looked like back here, where there's this P and it's ran, ran up. If, in fact, you see a breakdown, I will tell you right now, though, if you see a breakdown, let's just draw this in right, uh, below about 114, you're going to see some problems. There's nothing here. There's this thin air, giant hole here. Next level of support from there, probably 107. And you can see that very clearly when you just look at your different areas of this altimeter, right? So it shows you this. You can see you kind of take a long, broad brush look at all this looking backwards. And you can even, you know, if you don't want to draw your lines, you can just look at it and get used to it after a while, looking at what's happening. But still, right now, as we sit here, as we sit here, there is price indecision. We have a very wide area of consolidation right now. Consolidation right now is is a consolidation. You know, up to there. It's a wide area, and there's not much there, and this could break down very easily, like I said, but then you have further consolidation. You know, a lot of prices topping up in here. But again, below that is where your problem comes in. Any questions so far on this? So the big issue is you need to determine your trading environment. Understand what the general trend is. These days, the trend has been down two days, up for 10 days, down for a day, up for five days. You know, there is a lot of backstop due to central banks, due to liquidity all the things that are going on around the world. Bigger picture is what's happening in terms of you know, stocks. Well, we know that right now about last year, about 95% of the earnings of the S&P 500 were spent on share buybacks. A lot of share buybacks were announced again this year. February was a record month for announcements of share buybacks. That is supporting the market incredibly because companies are just buying their stocks regardless of any kind of technicals and fundamentals. They're just buying their stocks, and that's why we've seen such a nice 
hold and a nice rally on many of these positions, okay? The fact of the matter is that when you look at many of these, um, you'll notice that a lot of the players that are right now that are not the incremental players but the absolute players are the actual companies themselves, okay? Um, I'm going to give you a stock I want you to look at, something that we, I'm going to give you a little, I don't want to call it a tip here. I do not own this, by the way. I did own this, I don't. This stock doesn't want to stop. Uh, there's something going on here. I'm not exactly sure what. Watch this stock, ANTH. That's a little gift for you. Not suggesting you buy it or short it. I'm just telling you, watch this stock because it doesn't want to go down. We picked it up down here in the twos, got rid of it probably in a four and change, and kind of just said we're walking away from this right now because it's a little bit too hot. Um, got a nice piece on it, but you know what? There's, there was a little bit of a question as to you know, what's really going on here. There's no real news except for the fact they got um, relisted. $5 is support because $5 is one of the listing levels they need to be on. So I think that that's what happened today if you look at that. And it's been consolidating nicely. We'll see if it can break. If it breaks above about, uh, I see right where it is, 575 in the next couple of days, you can see a nice little zoom here um, very significantly. And these biotechs have been on fire. You probably know that already. So the, the things that you want to know is this. Number one, you want to listen to me on a weekly basis, if you can tolerate it. <laughs> uh, we talk to a lot of different guests all throughout uh, the world, uh, different money managers and technical uh, experts, fundamental guys, uh, stock market gurus. Uh, you've heard of them. And the bottom line is um, you, you look at uh, in the world in a different way on our podcast. The Disciplined Investor, you get on iTunes or go over to thedisciplinedinvestor.com. Uh, also, I have a show on Tuesday nights we do with John C. Dvorak, which is kind of a fun business show. Very fun, actually. Uh, very much interesting. Uh, and, hey, thanks, Jacob. Uh, GM, what packages? Listen, if you want to start out, because you can get a 10-day free trial on TradeStation on any of these, get the Commander Series and get Aileron. The Commander Series is three, three together. So you get the Commander Series, you get the Radar, you get the Autopilot, and uh, the Altimeters in the Commander Series. And then uh, the aileron you get as a separate. So you put those all together, and you'll have that all working for you. Uh, they'll look a little bit different on your screens, but again, the same concept. There's the lines are different, a few other things in terms of the way they look. So you'll see that. Uh, so, hey, Rick, thanks so much. Appreciate that. Uh, any questions you have, you can send me over at info at thedisciplineinvestor.com or ask Andrew at thedisciplineinvestor.com. Follow me on Twitter. Please follow me on Twitter. Uh, let me give my little Twitter handle here, at Andrew Horowitz. That's over at Twitter. You can go to Twitter there. Um, and uh, if, if you haven't tried, if you have TradeStation, you haven't tried these, I really suggest you do so because you have a 10-day freebie on it. So check that out. Uh, Fausto or somebody, you back there? Jesse, Fausto? Jesse or Fausto? Fausto or Jesse? I'm here. Go ahead. Okay, you're up, buddy. <laughs> All right. So you got everything. Uh, you covered everything you need to cover. Did you show them where to go? I, I oh, I, I showed them where to go. Oh yeah. I told them where to go. <laughs> All right. <laughs> All right. <laughs> Everything's great. So in the meantime, guys, thank you so much, um, Andrew. Andrew, you have any? Um, did you show them exactly about the uh, the plugin that you had, by the way? Again? Yep. I gave I gave them all of that information over on on TradeStation, um, and I, I, you know what, TradeStation is just a, listen. I'm not gonna. I, I don't. I don't. I don't get any money for this in terms of promoting TradeStation themselves. Obviously, I get paid for the plugins, but um, it's a great platform. Um, but also, I know you like it as well, so uh, it makes it very easy to trade. Lots of lots of goodies in there. So I told them exactly where to go. There's a link in the chat right now, so you can check that out, or go over to www.trigger. There's a lot of training here. You go over to triggercharts.com. And there's a lot of videos on there that you can see on exactly how these work and what's going on. And this is, this is stuff that really works very well. This is not pie-in-the-sky crazy stuff. It works, you can see, on all time frames and on all particular um, uh, securities because it's based on, on price and volume. I mean, what else matters? So anyway, Fausto, thanks so much. Andrew, thanks for coming, guys. And everyone, thanks for sticking around. Um, everyone, uh, see you all tomorrow in the Cyber Group room. Thanks, everybody. Enjoy the rest of your week, and happy trading.